solving inequalities. So we're going to be looking at two different types of problems today. The first type is where we are graphing. And when we graph, we either do a dashed or a solid line, depending on the inequality that's given. And then we shade one region or another. So if we're given the inequality where it has an equal sign as well as the inequality, we're going to graph a solid line. And if we just have a greater than or less than sign, it's going to be a dashed line. So we're going to go down and start our first example. So we're given slope intercept form. Our slope is negative one third and our y intercept is negative two. So I'm going to use the counting method where I go and find that y intercept of negative two. And then I graph my rise over run. So down one to the right three, down one to the right three, and then I'm just going to also go in the other direction to complete the graph. So I go back to my y-intercept, up one to the left two, up, oops, sorry, up one to the left three, up one to the left three. Now I have to determine if it's solid or dashed. Because we are given that equal sign as well as the inequality, it's going to be a solid line. So I'm going to fill in that solid line. So here's my graph. So I graph first. And I determined that it was solid. Then the next thing I need to do is determine the shading. So what we do is we use a, we use a test point and we're going to take that test point and we're going to sub it into the inequality that we're given in the question. I recommend using the point zero, zero, unless zero, zero is part of the line that you just graphed. And I recommend using zero, zero just because it simplifies it really quick. So zero is less than or equal to negative one third, zero, so I plug in for both x and y, minus two, and then I'm gonna simplify. So zero is less than or equal to negative two. Then you want to determine, is the statement true or false? Zero is greater than or equal to the number negative two. That is true. So if the statement is true, you're going to shade the region that holds the coordinate that was your test point. So my answer is true. So I'm going to shade the region that has the test point, which in this case is above. If your answer was false, even though ours wasn't, then you shade the region that does not hold the test point. The second type of graph we're going to look at is reinforcing what something we've already learned which is positive and negative intervals so as a quick reminder positive is above the x-axis and negative is below the only difference here is that we're actually doing the graph first before we were identifying the positive and negative from being given the graph so we're going to start with our table of values, it is a quadratic, so negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, 4, 1, 0, 1, and 4. What's happening on the inside is we have x minus 2, so that means that our x values are going to go to the right by two. And then on the outside, we have that reflection in the X, a vertical dilation, and up three. So 
I'm going to complete my table of values. And now I'm going to plot my points. into my graph. Positive is above. So I use those zeros to determine where the graph is positive or negative. The zero is at one zero and three zero. So from one to three, the graph is above. And negative the graph is below. So from negative infinity up to 1, and from 3 to positive infinity. Now you might be wondering why we're doing this again in this section, and it's because we actually are solving an inequality. This is the same as asking the question negative 3 x minus 2 squared plus 3 is greater than 0. So where the equation is greater than zero, indicating this is your y value. So where are the y values above zero, meaning above the x-axis? And your negative answer is very similar question, but below zero. So all we're doing is changing that f of x, which is really a y, to a zero.